Good morning class. You're welcome to our Python tutorial class today. My name is Uchenu Baike Labali and we will be looking at, um, we'll be making progress this today and um, before we go on I'll just quickly remind us of the past, the previous topic we looked at before this present one. Uh, previously we actually concentrated on Python flow control and in looking at that we were able to consider the if else statements and also we consider the if elif and else statement and apart from that we were able to practically cite few examples on how the if else and early statements can be applied i think we were able to write some codes on that and i want to believe you are actually constantly practicing and i'd really appreciate it if you practice constantly because that's the only way to become a good programmer and today we're going to progress a little bit we're going to look at today we're going to look at the string operations python string operations we're going to look at python string operations and then we're going to look at we're still going to look at python functions yes. so the first we're going to look at the, the python strings with python strings operation that will be the first we're going to look at strings operations. Okay, and then after that, we're going to look at Python functions. Pay attention as we go through this. Right. So the Python string operation and the strings. By now, you understand that the string is one of the you know data types we have in the Python program. And before now, we have looked at the string. We have discussed a whole lot about the string, and we're going to discuss further on the use of the string because there are a lot of things you need to understand. And I say the strings are always enclosed in a quote. Okay, the strings are always enclosed. Enclosed, sorry. The Python strings are always enclosed. So, okay, in, in quotes. Always enclosed in quotes. Okay, so it simply means that for you to write the Python strings, it must be in quotes. You can either use single quotes or you use double quotes. So whichever one you can use. So if you're using a triple quote, it's going to be a statement, a comment, Python comments, but a comment inside a function. So we always use a triple quote, but for the Python strings, you're allowed to use a single quote or double quotes. Okay, so this is supposed to be enclosed, sorry about this, E-N-C, okay. All right, so now um, we're going to cite a few examples about the strings and then look at a few operations. So for the strings now, for instance, you have name. All right. Maybe you have name. Then you have a quote. Then you have um. Then you have um, a name inside the quote because for you to write your string, you must have a quote and then you have whatever. You want to have it could be a name it could be a list of items it could be anything okay all right so you can just say name 
then you see elephants. Right. Now, elephant is an animal, so but the word the elephant is a string. Okay, we're going to look at a few operations. Now, in this string, uh, there are a few things we can do. We're going to just reflect over what all we have learned about the string. First of all, um, the strings, the, the characters in this word strings are accessible. You can access them. Okay, you can access them and um, you can print them out. For instance, you say um, get equals to name. All right, then you have your zero there. Then, and I want to print get. I want to print get. Okay, so I decide to run my code. Yeah. All right, I just ran my code and I'm getting E. E is the first letter in the word elephant. Okay, so E is the first letter in the word elephant. And for you to access this, you, this is the command you, the command you use. Get is equals to name. Name, you make reference to the variable and then in a square bracket, you use your index it simply means that the every single element in a word in, in a string okay in a string is assigned is assigned an index okay and the index goes like we said in the case of the list the same thing applies to the strings here the index also goes from e l e and goes down to t okay so if I want to get the the P here, I'm just going to I'm just going to change the index here. Okay, so if I want to get the P D, I'm going to change the index there to three. So if I change it to three, definitely I'll have my P. Yes, so my P is here printed out. So these are ways we can actually print out items and get every single item in a string in a string now the next thing i want to say is that we can also count the number of items the number of letters okay we can count the number of letters in this word elephant assuming i don't know the, the letters there it could be a million letters and all that so i don't know what it means so i'm just going to Count. So for me to count, I will still use my get keyword and say get equals to name. I will bring the variable, then I will, sorry, I will use, I will use a function called len, 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 like the length, but len in this case, len. I'm going to use the function, okay, then in a parenthesis, I'm going to type in the keyword inside the parenthesis. And I'm simply telling Python program, please get me count this. Let me get the number of letters in this word, in the string elephant. Mind you, I will not make direct reference to the string. I will just make reference to the variable contents of the string. And that's why I'm saying len name. But it shouldn't be len elephants. Okay, so now with this, I can just print my get again print I get then I should I should have the number of characters in the word elephants okay so I should have the number of characters in the word elephant so it's giving me it it is telling me that we have eight characters in the word elephant let me quickly count that one two three four five six seven eight yes it's giving me eight characters in that word elephants so now um that is it and also 
like I said, we are looking at Python strings operations. We are just going to look at every single operation in the Python strings, and we're going to see how to apply them in some reasonable things as well. The reasonable practices here. So now, um, also, there is a, a tool also used to break every single letter, every single letter in this string elephant. I can break it to single strings as well. Okay. And break them to into single strings now for instance um, I, I could use um, get equals to name dot splits okay dot split name dot split I'll just put a parenthesis and I told you that when you have an empty parenthesis it makes reference to the variable and this is called self that means it makes reference to that variable name here so there's no need for you to write name inside this parenthesis again it just makes reference sorry the split my splits it's not quite good so it's correct now splits name dot split okay now i will still print my get so it should split what's going to happen is that it should split this string into its strings okay into its strings okay so name dot split okay so all right so okay have a word there name dot split is giving us that Okay, so we're supposed to split that. Let me check. Name equals to elephant. Get equals to name dot split. And okay, it's supposed to give us name. Okay. We well, run that. All right, let's have let's have uh, let's have a combination of. I'm going to change the initial name. Let me just have a group of names. Okay, let me just have a statement here. A group of strings now. Um, I just say states equals to Canada. Then I'm having Mali. Then I'm having Morocco. Then I'm having Sudan. I'm having this. Okay. Now I'll just um apply this name does okay state does split now i'll just apply this to state does splits state does splits to print my gates okay good all right so now uh you notice something it this applies to a string with multiple words okay multiple words a string with multiple words Okay, so now, um, uh, initially we applied it to a single word, but in this case now we have it, I have various items inside the string and I tried to split them. So if you notice the outcome there, it's been splitted. And what you notice there is that here, everything from here, from Canada to Sudan are all in one string. Okay, they are all in one string, but now, but now, if you come down here, you notice that Canada has quotes. There's a quote around Canada, all right? Then also the same thing applies to Mali, the same thing applies to Morocco, and the same thing applies to Sudan. And yeah, if you look at this initial one here, you discover that they are all in one quote. But in this case, they were split it, so we have them in different quotes, all right? So initially what I tried doing was to I tried referencing, I wanted to break every single letter here. So I'm going to still try that again. 
I wanted to find a way. I will use a for loop in this case for. No, I don't need to use a for loop. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, for characters, for car in state. State and I'm going to one, two, three, four. What kind of state gets equals to state dot split. Right. Then, no, that shouldn't go. That shouldn't go. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. So I'm just trying out some things. I'm just trying out some things. But basically, this splits actually splits words. Uh, we we basically use splits when we're searching for words in a very large text. That is when we use our splits. Okay, when we are searching for words in a very large text, then we can use our splits. All right. So now we're going to look at numbers. Okay. 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 Um, we're going to look at um. We're still looking at our string operation. Now we have. Uh, country Canada okay country Canada so now see what I'm going to do I'm going to increase the space between this okay so I can to enable me use a particular function in Python program so after incre increasing this I'm going to use um, I'm going to use What we call the strip, the strip function. Okay, the strip function. So I'm going to say country dot strip strip function now. Okay, now then I'll print seek. I'll print seek s e e k. Okay, I have country that but if you notice my quote now there's a space in between my quote here there's a space in between my quote now I say seek is what country dot strip the question is the what does this what was the function of the strip here and that is what we want to find out then I'm going to run the program okay I'm going to run the program and okay so what the strip does what the strip does is that it takes off the this piece from this place and brings it close to the it just gives us everything here all right good so now um you might not notice what happened here but the only way i can explain this is that canada here if you look at the space between the start point of this dialog box there is no space at all okay the reason is because it's been split, it's been stripped. The space between this, the both sides of the Canada list have been, has been, you know, stripped. Now, let me go further to explain. Now, I'm going to strip the right. I'm going to use right R strip. Okay. I'm going to use R strip there. If I use a R strip, sorry. Okay. I'm going to use R strip. Let me take this out. Okay, I'm going to use arrow strip. If I use, if I do this, it's going to take up the space at the right side. Arrow strip means right strip. It's going to take the space by the right side out. Then it will leave a space at the left. That means if I print it, the space you're seeing here in the dialog box will not be there. It will, it will have a little space there. Okay, so let me just run this code and see what happens. So you can see that Canada has been shifted a little bit to the right. Okay, this wasn't how it was initially. Okay, but it has been shifted a little bit. Okay, good. But the right side has been stripped. You might not know what happened, but if I say R strip, then I write A inside again. Then, then I, I run my code. I run my code. Okay, name error. Name A is not defined. Okay, now, okay, A is not defined because A is supposed to be this. So, 
out of my code okay still giving me canada here yeah. still giving me r strip a canada okay so now the, the what happened is that it just takes off the space the space like i said takes off the space from the sides of the canada that's what happened so if i wanted to go back again to the wall i'll just i'll do an l strip now l strip left strip i'll do l strip which is the left strip and it will take off the space take off the space okay so you can see canada is back it's now close to the edge or the start point start line okay good so that is how the strip you know function works with the string okay so that is how it works with the string good so now um these are just a few operations i wanted to bring i wanted to explain you know about the string the python string operations okay these are just a few i wanted to explain about the python string okay so that's just it so um you also have the counts you have the counts you have good you have the counts you have the lower you have the the make trans and all that for instance you have um for instance you have i can just say that upper okay that upper then i have that i said country dot upper okay country dot upper what does this do now i'll quickly go and run my code let's see what this does okay. so you discover that canada has been changed to capital letter canada okay so now if you want to change you can change this to uppercase and you can change that to lowercase if i have this canada here to be uppercase maybe i have it this way canada i can easily change this to um i can change this to lowercase by saying country which is the variable here dot lower okay dot lower uh, this simply changes it to a lowercase if i run this program it changes canada to a lowercase okay so that is what happens all right that's just what happens and um, so these are just a few things you need to understand about the string and there's a few things you need to understand so um i want to also see how we can fit in something like a formatted string okay now i have um i have canada here i want to print canada okay i want to print canada so i'll just instead of printing c now i'll just format the i'm gonna put an f here sorry my distinction I'm, i'll put an f here then i'll have a, a quotes uh, then I, I can say the country name country name is is and the country name is um, is Canada okay country name is I'll come out here. I'll just put a comma there. Then I write country. Okay. Now, let me explain something here. When you're printing, in your print, when you're trying to get an output from a program, and maybe in the print, uh, in the in in the print parenthesis you are you are typing in a string you should expect your string to come out exactly the way it is typed in okay let me just take this since i'm not formatting the string let me take that out okay so now um you are expecting the string to come out the way it is it was typed in now i said the country name is the country name is 
are all in quotes. The words there are all in quotes. Then I have a comma here. Then I have a country. Now, this country makes reference to a country. And I'm using this country because it's a store of value. Because inside this country, there is a value stored inside. So if I'm writing this here, automatically, I'm going to get the value stored. Okay, the value that was stored inside. But in this case, it's going to tell me the country name is then whatever is stored in the country will be given to me. So if I run this now, okay, it's telling me invalid syntax. Now let me go back and check what happened. Okay, good. All right, there's a dot here, so I just have to take the dot out because I I'm, I was done with that. So I will now go ahead to run this again. Now it's telling me the country name is Canada. Now let's go back to our print. The country name is country. I told you the country is a store of value. If you come back to the first line here, line five, you will see that country has a value inside called Canada. All right, it's called Canada. So now you can see that instead of printing country, so to say the country name is country, it's telling you that the country name is Canada because the value store in this is Canada. Okay, so you can use this severally in your print functions to modify your print output and make it look very interesting. Okay, so that's just it. So I think these are the, just the basic things we need to look at in respect to the Python strings operation. So quickly I'm going to look at, I want us to look at the Python function. Okay, the Python function. So the Python function, all right, the Python function is actually used because most times when you're writing a very large code, you it will be advisable for you to break down these codes into you know smaller and you know workable elements, and that's where the Python function comes in. For instance, you want to uh, write a code that would a kind of uh, draw a circle and then color the circle so definitely you can break that down into two parts you can you can define a function that will you kind of draw the circle and then you define a function that will color the circle okay so that is how it works here so that so now in Python function we have what we call the div keyword the dev keyword is a definition keyword, All right? So, for instance, you want to add, you want to add um, uh, two numbers. You want to find the sum of two numbers. So, I can use the dev keyword, which means define. Okay, I want to define a function. Define then. Um, uh, okay, you can say sum. Of okay, sum of numbers. Then you put it in parentheses, please. Let there be a parenthesis there. Okay, so now the sum of I want to write a function that will give me the sum of two numbers. So in this function, in this function, I can decide to just enter a variable for the numbers x, okay, x and y variable in this function then I'll come here and say um, I can come here and say um, sum equals to sum of that of x and y is equals to x equals to x plus y x plus y then I'll use the return keyword I can okay let me use the print keyword for now I use the print keyword print sum print sum now let me run this code let's see what happens what's going to happen 
as we run this code. I know the code is not clearly defined yet, but it's telling you we have exit code zero. Okay, exit code zero now. Now the thing about a function is that you have to call a function. Okay, you have to call a function. Now um, I can come down now to call this function. Calling a function is just like calling somebody's name and the person responds back to you. Okay, so now I can come back, come down here, and I say um, num one equals to five. equals to 5 long 2 equals to 9 okay there is a sum equals to or you can say add equals to num 1 plus num 2 Plus num two, right? Okay, plus num two. Then you call the function. Then you have you have it that sum. Then you say add. You have the sum there. Let's say you have sum of numbers. Okay, sum of numbers. Right. So sum of numbers you have um add inside. So let me run that code and see what happens. Okay, missing one operation argument y required. Okay, so let's look at the what the error is saying there. We have one. They say the sum of numbers missing one required argument. Position argument y. Okay, so now I'll just change this to num one, num two. I'll just say num one, comma, num two. Sorry, num two. So I'll go ahead and run my code. Don't worry, I'm going to explain everything that's happening here. So obviously I have my answer here. My answer there is 14. Okay, 14. And you know that 5 plus 9 is definitely 14. So what I just did now, we just use the function. Okay, I'm going to explain this function. Then we'll do a little modification on the function because there are better ways of writing this. But well, I'm just introducing this. So now I define the function and this is, a, this is a function that is meant to add the sum of two numbers the sum of two numbers and I say define sort sum of two numbers and, I, and when you're writing your variable it's very important to you always you can introduce an underscore in between your words as you define your variable but the sum of numbers then in this parenthesis I have parameters okay or arguments call them arguments in the Python program so we have these parameters X and Y which represent the variables that will actually take in the values you are expected to feed in later on then this will be a column or normally when you define a function you have a column and then you have an indented block here the indented block is saying sum the sum is equals to X plus y and it's telling you that this argument you have here how you you want this to come out you want to have a summation of this to x plus y and then you have it here and then you're telling the python to print it out to print out the sum okay to print this out now um instead of having the print it's not advisable for us to have the print inside the block Okay, it's not always advisable for us to have the print inside the block. For instance, if I take this out, if I take this line out, okay, if I take this line out, I 
run this code. Okay, you notice that the outcome or the, the, the result is not printed out. Okay, so in, the, in defining a function, you must call this function for you to have the result printed out. Calling this function means just like calling somebody's name and the name of this function is sum of numbers now after writing out this code you must call call this number call it again okay you call it it comes okay then you fit in the the figures you want there you can fit in the figures already you have this assignment statements num1 equals to 5 num2 equals to that you can just fit that in okay fit that in and then comma fit that in so once you fit this in it's just like saying hey i'm calling you some of numbers now you can go ahead and print then that is the only time this print function can be activated that's the only time it can be activated yes but the the, the very bit of, let me just run that again it should give us our outcome again 14 good so now the the, the very better way the, the best way to actually present this would be for us to use the return return we can use the return keyword return sum okay so return sum then if we're having a return sum then we can have our print outside the block we can have our print statement outside the block and in that case we can we can kind of give assign a variable to that by saying results equals to that then you print results you can have your print here print results okay good so now let's let's run the code again and see how it goes okay now we have our 14 printed out again if i don't want to have my result printed out this way i can still print directly I can print this okay so print sum of numbers bracket that let me run the code again yes so my uh, my 14 is still printed out good so in defining this function again there's a better way to present this Okay, I just use this to explain to us in detail how this works, but there's a very simple way to do this. Instead of having all this here, you can just take this out. Take this out totally and then call your function directly. Okay, you can call your function directly. And calling your function means you can just say results. You can just say results. That's the final result you expect is equals to sum sum of numbers. Then inside the argument box, inside your parentheses, just fit in any number you want to you want to add. If you want to add 10, you want to add um, 10, comma, and then 11. Okay. I want to add 10 and 11. So you now say print. <coughs> print results print results now let me run this code Good. so now my outcome there is 21 so you can see it's more easier to do it this way instead of assigning this so let's go through this again let's see what's happening here now in the first instance you defined a uh, you defined your you know function the sum of numbers that's the function <coughs> okay sum of numbers then you said um, now you say sum is equals to now in this argument box you have your x and y x and y then now come down here in the call line because this is calling out to this in the call line x 
is the same as 10 y is the same as 11 okay so 10 is marked to x and 11 is marked to y so once this is presented this way python will automatically assume that yes uh, that you know that is how it it works okay so it will immediately once you call it it will come back here and execute this operation here okay so the the final result will be printed out definitely good so apart from this you can directly assign your variable your value there you can say x is equals to x is equals to 10 if you, if you say x is equals to 10 then you come down here and take this out all right take this out and let's run this program and see what happens okay it's giving us a syntax error so let me see what the syntax error is okay okay x is equals to dimension zone okay so x is equals to that that's okay okay sorry so okay we can apply that here the way we can apply that in an anonymous function but not here please so i'll just go ahead and still have my x there so we have our x there so then we still fit in our value x value there so that should give us our code so sorry let me take this out take this out okay, so this should give us our final outcome 21 good so the python function helps us like i said it helps us to break down um, a number it helps us to break down uh, a solution process into bits okay into sections and it makes work very easy for instance you have these two set of numbers 10 and 11 you want to add them you want to write a program that adds 10 and 11 you want to write a program that multiplies 10 and 11 you want to write a program that gets the square okay that it kind of can give you the average of 10 and 11 we can actually incorporate all that into this now to write a program already i have a program here that sums up these two values 10 and 11 it's not just 10 and 11 you can have any other number here but for now we're using this as an example now i want to write another program or another function that would multiply 10 and 11 you could also write another pro function that could find the average of 10 and 11 now let's go let's we can just break that into simple functions now i can say define okay define um, product of numbers the products of products of numbers product of numbers meaning I want to get the product of these two numbers so I'm going to say products equals to so let me specify the variables here again x comma y but I'm going to be multiplying that product equals to x times y x times y is going to be my products so i'm going to return products as my results return products okay so then i can write another function again to find the average of those two numbers okay the average of those two numbers. so this since there are two numbers and just to divide them by two but I could just write define average AVR for now. Average of numbers. Average of numbers. Okay, so. Okay, so I'll still put, I'll still have this here. X comma y all right so i can just say average average avr equals to 
equals to AVR is equals to the record. I'm looking at the possibility of making reference to to a, a function. Okay. Okay. Let me just go ahead and say AVR is equals to x plus y divide by two. Then returning the results. Return AVR. All right, so now I've just written three functions. The first function will sum or add numbers. The second one will find the product of numbers. And the third function there would actually give us the average of two numbers. Okay, so the results, like I told you that when writing a function, once you're done, all you need to do, call the functions. Okay, so call the function. I will use a very straightforward print or output command. I will just print directly. Now, by printing, I'm calling. I'm calling the, the functions. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm, I will just say print. Okay, print. What do you have there? Sum of numbers. Print sum of numbers sum of numbers then in parentheses i'm going to have the numbers i want to be printed i want to find the sum 10 and 11. okay then i'll still have my print function again print product of numbers okay. print product of numbers inside the parentheses i'll still have 10 comma 11 then Again, we're going to have print average of numbers, AVR of numbers. Then inside the print, I'm still going to have my 10 and 11. Okay, so that's what we'll have there. Uh, I want to believe our code will run well, but let me just run it and see what happens. Good, so I have, we have our results printed out. I'll just um, shift this up a little bit. Okay, good. So now you can see that the function uh, we've been able to get all the outcome. We wanted the sum of those two numbers. The sum of ten and eleven is twenty-one, and the product of ten and eleven. Ten times eleven is one hundred and ten, and the average of ten and eleven is fifteen point five. So obviously you can see that the, the 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 function Python function helps us, like I said, it helps us to break down processes into bits and then get the required result easily. Yes. So and I think we've explained a few things about the function. <clears throat> like I said, you can use this to the the easiest way to do this is to call the function. If you don't call the function. There won't be an output from the function yes but the beautiful thing about the function is that it actually breaks down the process into bits okay the process is broken down into bits and i want to tell you clearly that this is what we call the user defined function and this is because the the you the programmer is allowed to define this function the way it suits you because you're writing a program you know what you have in mind and you're defining your function in line with what you have in mind and that's what is happening here like we have this function here i personally define this sum of numbers and if you're defining a function you have your argument box your argument box is where you actually enter your your variables or your unknown okay your unknown you enter your variables there that's your argument box okay so and then under that you can go ahead to define the statements that will take care of what you have in mind like you know that the sum of number in this case sum of number is sum of x and y so x plus y is the sum the return keyword is used to tell you what you want what the output is going to be and that is where we why we use the return keyword and 
I told us that it's not advisable for us to print from the block. Okay, so we don't print. When I mean printing from the block, the sum of numbers here, we have this function definition, definition of sum of numbers. Every uh, line of statement you're writing under this is a block. It's under this block of code. Now, here in the program we're just writing now, we have three blocks of code. We have one, we have this is one, okay, this is one block of code. We have the definition of sum of numbers, sum is equal to this, and then return this. This is one block of code. And then, secondly, we have this block of code. Okay, that's the second block of code. And then, finally, we have this. We have this block of code. So, you can have this into hundreds. It all depends on what you want to do. Okay, you can have this into hundreds. Yes, it all depends on what you have in mind. Okay, if I have these numbers and I want to, uh, I want to. Okay, I want to divide them. I want to find the. I want to divide these numbers. Okay, I can introduce another function as well. I can say define. Okay, I can just say divide numbers. Divide numbers. Okay, so <laughs> to divide divide numbers, and I'll say, sorry, I have to include my variables there I have my x x comma y so I can just say um, division post x Return division. Return division. So you can see I've just added another function. Okay, I've added another block of code under this function. Like I told you, you can add as many block of code as you wish, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so now I'll just come under my print here. Print in parentheses i'm gonna have my divide numbers there then i would what number do i want to divide but whatever you're entering there x will be divided by y you just have to need to understand that so i could just have my 30 divided by 15 30 comma 15 so that automatically divides splits 30 by 2 to give you 2 2.0 so if I drag my command line up you can see the outcome there you have this, this is the final code I just wrote now it's giving me 2.0 so the first one is 21 added this multiplied this average and this divide okay so you can have as much line of code as you wish to have and I would really advise you practice this okay you practice this it's very important you practice this okay very good so um now i just want to say i just want to point something out it's supposed to be a topic of its own but i'll just point something out now in python program we have what to call function arguments okay function argument now this is a function we just define a function here inside this bracket this parenthesis we have items inside what we enter into this parenthesis is called an argument okay so anytime you hear the word argument it means what you have in the parenthesis now the function arguments here are x and y now if i come to the print section and then i have my x which is 10 and there is no y it will tell you that it requires two arguments but one supply. So if we take this out, now let's take this out so that we can create an error and see what happens. And then I will run the code. Now, 
it's going to throw an error to us, an error message to us. Now, it's a print, no, no, okay, type error, sum of numbers, missing one required positional argument. And this is because of the, we just deleted one value there, that's why it's throwing this error to us. So you can see that it's talking about argument. So the function argument is the values you have inside the parentheses. All right, so that is what we call the function arguments. Okay, good. So now, um, I'm see. So under the sum of numbers, under the sum of numbers, let's take go back and look at that again. Under the sum of numbers, we have x and y. So, in the argument you're providing at the print section, you must have two values as well. So I'm just going to return that back again. So this settles everything. If I run the code, it's going to give me a correct result. The output is going to be correct and perfect. Yes. I want to believe you have followed till this point. I want to believe you followed the lesson till this point. So the last thing I'm going to talk about before I wrap up this lesson today is going to be anonymous function. I'll just talk about that briefly, briefly. I'll just talk about the anonymous function briefly. Okay, so I'll talk about the anonymous function just briefly. So, sorry, I just want to take off the codes. All right, so um, we will briefly look at the anonymous function. Anonymous. Now, the anonymous function is like a one-line function, okay? And you could call it also, I'll put this in parentheses here, lambda function, lambda, lambda function. Okay, the lambda function is a one-line function, all right? So... For instance, you said you want to take a sum. We'll just finish taking it, uh, looking at the, the function, uh, Python function. But in this case, now we're looking at the anonymous function. But in this case, we don't need to do all the definition like we did in the previous example we just finished now. Uh, I want to take a sum of numbers. Sum is equals to... I'll just use the lambda. Lambda is an inbuilt function. Okay, an inbuilt function built into the Python. Okay, so good. So now you can actually make use of the lambda function. Then you say x, like we did before, comma, y. Then you have a column here. Okay, you have a column here. Then you define what you want to do. How do you want, what do you want to do with x and y? You can just say you want to add, add, you want to find the sum. You can just say x plus y. Okay, good. Now, x plus y. All right? Good. So now, um, you can enclose everything here in a parenthesis. Everything here can be enclosed in a parenthesis. Then you have another parenthesis outside where you fit in your values, the value of x and y. I'm going to say like we did before, 10, 11. Now, you notice something about this function. A thing about this function is that it's a one-line function, okay? It's just a one-line function, and um, you can just print some straight. Just print some. Print your sum. Let me hit, let me run this. Now, the sum has been printed that I have 21. Okay, 21. So, the lambda function is what we call the anonymous function. There's no name to that. I didn't assign any name. Like previously, if you remember calling your attention back to the last example I gave before this one, we were able to define our functions, give it a name, for instance, sum of numbers, product of numbers, um, you know, average of numbers, multiplication of numbers, and all that. So we're actually naming them. But in this case, there is no name. Just a sum equals to I just use the lambda function and then I'm able to get an output. Alright, good. So now um, 
I can I want to do something initial in the previous I think I can apply that here I can assign the value of X here X equals to 10 okay X equals to 10 if I'm doing this I can take this out all right now let me run this program again and see what happens sorry still giving me a syntax error okay I thought I could okay I, I cannot do that but okay it's giving me a syntax error and let me see non default argument follows default argument okay so all right but what is very important is that you can have your um, assignments you can have an anonymous assignment like this one here the lambda and with this you can do anything sorry let me take this out again okay so with this you can actually do anything you can do some calculations with this it's just a very straightforward um, calculation and there is no name attachment to that you can do a multiplication of this you just need to change this and change this the products then you have this here changes as well so you can find the product of those two numbers like we did in the other function and you have it printed one round time yes so the lambda function is a very straightforward uh, function it's called an anonymous function so when you hear the word anonymous, fun anonymous function in python program we are actually making reference to the lambda function the lambda function yes so i want to this is where we're going to we will wrap up the lesson for today and i would like you to take your time and go over all we have discussed today and do your personal practice because if you've been listening and watching the videos without writing a code you're not doing yourself any good as much as possible i would recommend that you practice give it your best shot practice regularly that is the only way you can become a good you know programmer yes once again my name is Uchenna Michael Abali and this is Domino, Domino Tech Kids Tech Academy and in the description box I'm going to drop our website and we have registration ongoing maybe you've been following our lessons and you are very you want to kind of have more of these lessons you want to you kind of professionally be established you want to be professionally established you want to be a professional programmer and you find our lesson very interesting registrations are ongoing people are registering and we want you to be a part of us yes so you can just look at the description box there we have a website just come to the website and register with us yes thank you very much see you in the next class thank you